Citroen Dispatch, 2 litre blue HDI, full service, on the oil, air, fuel and cabin filter. The sump plug is removed by hand, you just need to remove this locking pin here and then you'll be able to twist the sump plug anti-clockwise. Once you've let the oil drain out, you'll be able to move on to the oil filter. Now the original oil filters have this tool to remove them, whereas the aftermarket filters are just flat sided. Apply a little bit of oil on the mating surface of the new filter. Now you don't really need the socket to refit these types of oil filters as they don't actually need to be tightened more than just by hand. So once the filter is touching the mating surface, you only need to turn the filter another three quarters of a turn for the filter to be tight. This is the filter socket type for the MAN filter. Now the oil filter is refitted, you can clean up the sump and replace the sump plug along with the locking pin. The oil capacity that I found gave 6 litres, which ties in with the amount of oil that came out. The filler is a little bit awkward because it has one of those plastic meshes that stops you from being able to put a funnel in. So you'll have to hold the funnel at the same time as filling the oil. Add about 5.5 litres of oil and run the engine for a few minutes and then leave the engine off for another 5-10 minutes before you can check the level using the dipstick. Now to remove the dipstick. On this particular vehicle it did appear that we have an unfinished, in the ma manufacturing process, dipstick that doesn't actually show the minimum and max level. So as you can see, once we wipe off the oil, we do appear to be missing any form of level indication as shown here in the owner's manual. As 6 litres did appear to come out, I added the remaining half a litre for a total of 6 litres. Now we can move on to the fuel filter, which is hidden by the engine cover.
So this is the oil filter under the metal cover. We just need to remove the three 10 mil bolts. Now to remove the fuel hoses. So they've got these little plastic centers that need lifting up then the outside part of the clip needs to be pushed down. These were a little worn, which is why I was struggling a little bit. I was concerned that they might break, but we did manage to get them out. Unlock the connector with the orange clip and then we need to lift this black part of the connector to remove it. The filter is then removed with a 24mm socket. Now they can be quite stiff they will they will move So the housing is removed without the fuel filter, the original fuel filter is stuck near the bottom. So remove the original o-ring, we need to fit another. Add the new filter to the housing. Fit the new o-ring. When removing the old filter, be careful it is attached at the bottom and if you move it too hastily it can splat diesel everywhere so just, just be careful, rock it backwards and forwards a little bit let it drain out the best you can and move it away using an old rag housing doesn't have a torque figure, you just need to wind it back in until it meets the plastic stop and returns to the position it was in before. Obviously don't over tighten it, there's no need to. You can add a little bit of lubrication to the o-ring if you do think that it's a little tight when refitting.
now refit all the old pipes and the connector. Now everything's refitted, just check it one last time before we start the engine. We're going to start the engine before replacing the metal cover. I like to try cycling the ignition a few times, which powers the lift pump from the tank and hopefully fills up the filter, any diesel that may be missing. But what you can do as well is as soon as you start the engine back up, rev the engine up a bit and it should refill the filter without it cutting out. Check the engine bay, check there aren't any leaks coming from the filter or anywhere around it. Give the filter a clean and we can replace the metal cover again. Now for the air filter which is located on the right hand side of the engine, it's surrounded by six cross head or flat head screws, you can use either. They may be a little bit worn or rusted so just be careful not to round them out if you do use a cross head. So with the airbox lid removed we can get the old filter out, vacuum any debris out of the airbox if necessary. And when fitting the new filter just make sure that all the edges are sat correctly before replacing the airbox top. Now into the driver's footwell for the cabin filter removal. Remove this kick panel under the steering collar. And what you're looking for on the far left is this black cover here. Now the aftermarket filters tend to have tabs on them which make it a little bit easier to remove them. These are the original genuine parts and they don't have the tabs which aid removal. So they were quite awkward. There is one stacked on top of another so you'll need to remove the top one and then the bottom one.
there's not a whole lot of access which made recording and doing the job quite difficult so you may get a few scratches on your arms but it can be done you just need to try and grab it and pull it up into the hole for removal and once you finally do remove the original filters note the direction of the airflow which is towards the cabin the new filters have the tabs on which make it quite clear which way around they go and you'll want the tabs at the top of the filter when refitting which will make it easier to remove them next time around To reset the service light on the Citroen Dispatch, if you have dials up here above this screen, then you'll need to hold the left hand button here. If you don't have the dials, as far as I know, it's the right hand button. So with the ignition off, hold the left button here. and turn the ignition on wait for the countdown to get to zero and that's the service light reset thanks for watching i hope this video has helped if it has, then please do take the time to like and subscribe. And for more videos on this car and many, many others, please do check out my channel. Thank you.